Hey class, Mr. McNally here, introducing our last topic for the year. Can't believe it's already June, um, but today we're going to start our study of ecology. Ecology is the study of the natural world and the relationships. So let's take a look at the first slide here. What is ecology? It's the study of how organisms interact with the biotic and abiotic factors in their environment. So right off the bat, you can see there's some new vocabulary in here. These two words, biotic and abiotic, we're going to talk about those. What you might want to do today is make some flashcards or definitely jot down some notes. I will make a copy of these notes available to you as well. But there's a lot of new words that you need to know the definitions of. I think you'll understand the concepts, but the definitions are going to be important. Environment. Your environment is every living and non-living thing that surrounds an organism. So uh, your environment could be your bedroom. So what's everything that's in your bedroom? Do you have a pet? Do you have books? Do you have a carpet, a bed? Whatever is in your, in, in your surroundings is part of your environment. They could be abiotic and biotic, which are those two words that we're going to talk about. Biodiversity is the degree to which species vary within an ecosystem. Bio means living. Diversity means differences. So when we talk about biodiversity, we're talking about the differences among the different living things in an ecosystem or in an environment. Biodiversity is always a positive thing. The more variety of species, the more biodiverse an area is. And you really want a biodiverse ecosystem because that gives organisms more food choices, more places to build nests. So the, the more biodiversity, the more healthy and stable an ecosystem will be. So here's those two words that we talked about before, abiotic and biotic. Like we said, biotic, bio, always means living. The opposite of biotic is abiotic, which means not living. So here's your first definition. Abiotic factors are the non-living parts of an ecosystem. Some examples include water, soil, gases such as oxygen, carbon dioxide, sorry, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and hydrogen. So you have primary gases in the atmosphere. The temperature, sunlight, and rocks and minerals that you would find in the soil. Uh, salt in water or salinity, and the pH, the level of acid or baseness in the soil. Those are all parts of the ecosystem that are important to living things that they depend on and uh, that could uh, cause them problems that they didn't have. Those are abiotic factors that need to be in an ecosystem. The opposite of abiotic, like we said, is biotic, which are living parts. So that would include all of the humans animals, plants, bacteria, fungi, and all the microorganisms. So anything that's living in the ecosystem would be a biotic factor. And all living things require other living things as well, mostly for food. Nothing that's alive uh, can stay alive if it doesn't eat one of the other types of biotics. So here's just a slide showing you uh, a, a particular community or a uh, ecosystem by the beach, and you see some of the biotic factors um, would be the grass, okay? And there would probably be some uh, crabs and insects and things living around here. And in the water, there would be some fish. Those would be the animals and the plants. And what you don't normally see but are everywhere would be things like bacteria in the soil, um, microorganisms that are so small that they're invisible, but those are also biotic factors. The abiotic factors in this picture would include the sand and the rocks, the water, the air, the temperature, and the light. All of those things are part of the environment but are not alive. But living things could not live without the water or the air or a certain temperature and amount of light. And here's just another picture that um, shows you the differences between some of the living termite mounds and non-living sunlight uh, factors in an ecosystem. The next part is to talk about the different levels of complexity that exist in the world. And I like to start at the bottom. Okay, At the bottom in the habitat we have the smallest uh, level which would be a species. 
one member of a species for maybe like one chipmunk in a forest. Here I'll show you an example of a dog. When you take all of the different species and put them together, they, well, sorry, if you take all of the members of a species and put them together, they make a population. So if we have one chipmunk, then we'd have a whole population of chipmunks. If you have one dog, the population would be all the dogs. Then if we move up and we add all the different species, which is a lot more biodiversity now, you have something called a community. So a community doesn't just include the chipmunks, it would also include the oak trees and the rabbits and the birds and anything else that's alive in the uh, area. So the example over here is showing you the one species of dog and the population of all the dogs in Medford. And then it sh when you rise up to the level of the community, it includes not just dogs, but cats, people, birds, squirrels, anything else that lives in Medford. So the community is bigger. Bigger than the community is an ecosystem, and the ecosystem would be all of the living and non-living things. So that would include your biotic and your abiotic resources. The big difference between these two is that a community is only living or biotics, whereas the ecosystem is both. If you take all of the ecosystems that are the same, like all the rainforests, and put them together, they make a biome. We live in a temperate forest. Long Island, Patchogue, Medford area is part of a temperate forest biome. That just means that we have uh, four seasons, a cold winter, a hot summer, and a nice uh, spring and fall. And our trees tend to drop their leaves every fall and grow new ones in the spring. That's typical of a temperate forest where we live. You also find them all across the United States and in Europe. Uh, that would be our biome. And then the biggest unit would be the biosphere, the living sphere. A sphere just means a globe. So basically it's the whole planet. It's the whole planet where life exists, which is pretty much everywhere from the north to the south pole and everything in between. There's different biomes, but there's life pretty much everywhere on the surface of the earth. The word habitat. Habitat it's just telling us where an organism lives. So these elephants are living on the savanna of Africa. That's their habitat. A niche, or niche, depending on how you want to pronounce it, is not the same as the habitat. It's really just telling us what the organism does, the role it plays in the environment. So the elephant's role is to get leaves uh, out of the trees and eat them, or to graze along the grasses. It's a plant eater. That's its niche. When two organisms occupy the same niche, they will compete. So, for example, if you have squirrels and chipmunks both living in the same habitat, and they're both trying to eat the acorns, they're going to compete. They're both going to be trying to eat the same food. So the roles of organisms, again, that's their niche, and it just tells you what they do. The beavers cut down trees and build dams. The earthworms dig holes through the ground to eat the food that they need and aerate the soil. The bumblebee's job is to take the pollen from the flowers and make honey, thereby pollinating the flowers and the crops. Those are the different niches of those organisms. So here we go again to look through the different levels of organization. The first is the species. One species is a particular set of organisms that are the same enough to be able to reproduce together. So this polar bear can meet with this polar bear to create baby polar bears. That's how you know they're a species. They can reproduce within, each, uh, within their own species. When you add up all the members of a species, that is the population. So it's a group of individuals in the same area that are of the same species. A population is bigger than the individual. A community is including all the living things that occupy that area. So it's different populations of species uh, put together. So it's the lion and the wildebeest, but it's also the grass and the organisms living in the soil and the shrubs in the background. And if there were giraffes or antelope, they would also be part of this community. Moving up to the ecosystem, 
we are talking about all of the abiotic and biotic factors. So in this picture, it's the fish, it's the lily pads, it's the uh, plants growing in the background, but it's also the water they're living in, it's the sunlight that's coming in, and the air around them, the gases in the ocean, in the pond, all of those things are part of the ecosystem. So uh, for an ecosystem to be stable, it must have a constant supply of energy, which is the sunlight, the living organisms have to be able to incorporate energy, and energy comes from eating food. So the fish have to be able to get energy from eating the plants, and the plants have to get energy from absorbing the sunlight, and if there were um, raccoons in the area, they would get their energy from eating the fish. So all the organisms have to be able to use energy. And there must be a recycling of materials between organisms and the environment. An example of a recycling of materials is what the plants are doing with the animals. The plants are getting the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and producing it, uh, using it to produce their food, and they release oxygen. The animals can absorb the oxygen from the air or the water, and they can use that to produce energy, releasing CO2, which will go back to the plants. They are recycling the oxygen and the carbon dioxide. This is a picture showing you of biomes. Like we said, we live in a temperate forest, which you see in this light green. There's another temperate forest in Europe, over here in China and Japan. So all of these different ecosystems make up the temperate forest biome. If you went down to the tropical areas where you see Mexico and Latin America, Africa, Southeast Asia, that's the tropical rainforest biome. And we said before, the biosphere is the entire planet that includes life. So all the biomes put together throughout the entire planet Earth is the biosphere. And this is just a picture showing you the biosphere is the biggest all the way down to the species within the habitat is the order of complexity. So like I said, you might want to take all the vocabulary that you learned in this presentation and make a little flashcards out of them and uh, use them to do the assignment because the vocab is really the, the biggest um, challenge in this unit. If you have any questions, message me. Have a great day.